Hi, my friends. Today, I want to present you a new story. Enjoy watching it. The morning of my interview dawned gray and somber, as if the sky itself mourned with me. I stared at the reflection in the mirror, adjusting the collar of my mother's navy suit. The fabric felt soft but sturdy against my skin, a testament to her skilled hands. I closed my eyes, imagining her standing beside me, whispering words of encouragement. The ring on my finger, a simple band with an intricate design, glinted softly, anchoring me to her memory. It was the last gift she gave me before she passed, a keepsake imbued with her strength. I took a deep breath, steeling myself for the day ahead. This job interview wasn't just about securing a position. It was about survival, about finding a foothold in a world that had crumbled beneath my feet. With a final glance at the photo of my mother on the side table, I whispered, This is for you, Mom. The bus ride to the other side of town felt interminable. My thoughts turned with anxiety and hope in equal measure. I clutched my bag tightly, rehearsing my answers to potential interview questions. The cityscape blurred past the windows, a backdrop to my internal monologue. As the bus neared my stop, I gathered my composure, focusing on the task at head. The construction company's office was an unassuming trailer parked beside a bustling construction site. I stepped off the bus, the gravel crunching under my heels, and walked towards the entrance, my heart pounding. Inside, the waiting room buzzed with the quiet hum of nervous energy. Other candidates, all dressed in varying shades of corporate chick, sat with their portfolios neatly arranged on their laps. I found an empty seat and sat down, my hands fidgeting with the strap of my bag. A tall, impeccably dressed woman with a clipboard appeared in the doorway. I said, Roberts, she called out. I stood up, smoothing down the front of my suit. Right this way, please. The walk to Mr. Davidson's office felt like a march towards destiny. I followed the woman through a narrow hallway lined with construction plans and safety posters. She knocked on a door at the end of the hall and gestured for me to enter. Good luck, she said with a kind smile. I stepped inside, my eyes immediately drawn to the cluttered desk covered in blueprints and paperwork. The room smelled faintly of sawdust and fresh coffee. Behind the desk sat Mr. Amur Davidson, a rugged man in his late forties with a salt and pepper beard and piercing blue eyes. He looked up from his papers and stood, extending a hand. Ms. Roberts, welcome. Please have a seat. His grip was firm, his hand roughened by years of labor. I sat down, clutching my bag on my lap. Thank you for seeing me, Mr. Davidson. He leaned back in his chair, studying me with piercing blue eyes. Call me Amer. And you're Isa Roberts, correct? Yes, that's right, I replied, trying to steady my voice. Amur picked up a folder from his desk and flipped it open. I've reviewed your resume. You don't have much experience in construction, but I'm interested in what you can bring to the team. Why do you want to work here, Aisha? I took a deep breath, drawing strength from the ring on my finger. I'm eager to learn and grow within a stable company. My mother always emphasized the value of hard work and dedication, and I believe I can bring that ethic to your team. While I don't have a background in construction, I'm willing to start from the bottom and work my way up. Amur nodded thoughtfully. Hard work and dedication are crucial in this industry. Tell me about a time you faced a significant challenge and how you overcame it. I paused, gathering my thoughts. During my final year in college, I was balancing a full course load while working part-time to support my family. My mother was diagnosed with cancer and I had to step up to help take care of her. It was an incredibly difficult time, but I managed to complete my degree with honors. I learned to prioritize, manage my time effectively, and stay resilient even when things seemed impossible. Amur's expression softened slightly. That's quite a story. I admire your perseverance. He asked several more questions about my previous job experiences, my strengths, and how I handled conflicts in the workplace. I answered each one as honestly and thoroughly as I could, feeling a growing sense of calm as the conversation progressed. Amur's direct but fair approach made it easier to open up, and I sensed he appreciated my sincerity. As the interview neared its end, Amir's eyes drifted to my hand once again. That's an interesting ring you have there, he remarked, his tone curious. Where did you get it? I glanced down at the ring, feeling a pang of sadness mixed with pride. It was my mother's. She always wore it and she passed it down to me before she, before she passed away. Amir's gaze intensified. May I see it closer? Caught off guard by the request, I hesitated briefly before slipping the ring off and handing it to him. He examined it closely, turning it over in his hand. His expression shifted from curiosity to shock as he read the inscription inside. Where there's hope, he murmured, then looked up at me with wide eyes. This ring? I swallowed hard, my heart racing. What about it? He reached into his pocket and pulled out a ring that was nearly identical to mine. The inscription on the inside read, There's always light. He placed the two rings side by side on the desk, and the words clicked together perfectly. Where there's hope, there's always light. 
Amur's voice trembled as he spoke. My father had these rings made. One for me and one for my sister. We were separated in foster care and I never saw her again. Your mother, she was my sister. The world seemed to spin as the weight of his words sank in. I felt a rush of emotions, shock, disbelief, and a profound sense of connection. You're saying you're my uncle? Amer nodded, tears brimming in his eyes. Yes, Aisha. I've been searching for her for you for so long. I felt tears welling up in my eyes as well. I can't believe this. All this time, I thought I was alone. You're not alone, Amer said softly. We're family. For a moment, we sat in stunned silence, the reality of our connection sinking in. Then Amer cleared his throat, breaking the spell. There's so much we need to talk about, so much to catch up on. But first, let's finish this interview. I nodded, wiping away a tear, of course. Amur smiled, a mix of sadness and joy in his eyes. I have to admit, this changes things. I was already impressed by your determination and resilience, but knowing you're my niece, it's overwhelming. He leaned back, taking a deep breath. Aisha, you've got the job. Welcome to the team. Relief and happiness washed over me. Thank you, Uncle Amir. I promise I won't let you down. I know you won't, he said, standing up and extending his hand. We'll start with the basics and work our way up. You'll have a lot to learn, but I'll be here to guide you every step of the way. I stood up and shook his hand, feeling a newfound sense of hope and belonging. I'm ready, let's do this. As I left the office, the overcast sky outside seemed a little brighter. The world that had felt so uncertain and daunting now held promise and potential. I knew that whatever challenges lay ahead, I had a family and a future to look forward to. The construction site buzzed with activity, workers moving purposefully between half-built structures and stacks of materials. The contrast between their focused energy and my swirling thoughts was stark. I took a deep breath, trying to ground myself. My phone buzzed in my pocket, and I pulled it out to see a text from my best friend Jenna. Jenna, how did it go? Did you get the job? My fingers hovered over the screen as I tried to find the words. Finally, I typed back. Me, you won't believe what happened. I'll call you tonight. I slipped the phone back into my pocket and turned my attention back to the office trailer. Amir had asked me to wait for a few minutes while he wrapped up some work. I decided to use the time to gather my thoughts and let the reality of the situation sink in. A few minutes later, Amir emerged from the trailer, a thoughtful expression on his face. He approached me with a tentative smile. Aisha, do you have some time to talk? There's a cafe nearby where we can sit down and discuss everything. I nodded, yes, of course, I have plenty of questions. Good, he said, leading the way. There's a lot we need to cover. The cafe was a cozy little place just down the street, with warm lighting and a comforting aroma of coffee and baked goods. We found a quiet corner and settled in. Amir ordered us both coffees, and once the drinks arrived, he leaned forward, his expression serious but gentle. Aisha, I want to start by apologizing for not finding you and your mother sooner, he began. I searched for years, but the records from our foster care placements were lost, and every lead I found ended in a dead end. I sipped my coffee, the warmth soothing my nerves. I understand, Uncle Omer. I can't imagine how hard it must have been for you. It was, he admitted, his eyes clouding with memories. But let me tell you about your mother, my sister Layla. He took a deep breath and began his story. Layla and I were inseparable as children. Our parents died in a car accident when we were very young and we were placed in foster care. Unfortunately, the system was chaotic and we ended up in different homes. I was adopted by a kind couple who moved out of state, but Layla wasn't as lucky. I tried to keep in touch, but we lost contact. He paused, his voice thick with emotion. I never stopped looking for her, though. I hired private investigators, scored public records, and even traveled back to our hometown several times. But it was like she had vanished. I listened intently, my heart aching for the hardships both my mother and Amir had endured. She never talked much about her childhood, I said softly. But I know it was difficult for her. She was always so strong, always putting on a brave face. Amur nodded. That sounds like Layla. She was always the stronger one between us. I'm so proud of the woman she became and the daughter she raised. I felt a lump in my throat, tears threatening to spill. Thank you. She was an amazing mother. I just wish she could have seen this day. Amir reached across the table and took my hand. She's here with us in spirit, Aisha, and now we have each other. We can honor her memory by building the family we both missed out on. I squeezed his hand, feeling a sense of comfort and connection. I'd like that very much. We spent the next hour sharing stories and memories. Amr told me about his life after he was adopted, how he found his passion for construction, and how he built his company from the ground up. He spoke with pride about his wife, Sarah, and their two sons, Jake and Ethan, who were both in college. They'll be thrilled to meet you. Amir said with a smile. Our family has always felt a little incomplete, 
and now I understand why. I can't wait to meet them. I replied, feeling a warmth spread through me at the thought of having cousins. As the conversation continued, we delved deeper into the mystery of the rings. Do you know why your father had these rings made? I asked. Amor nodded. Our father was a deeply sentimental man. He believed in the power of hope and light, even in the darkest times. When our mother fell ill, he had the rings made with those inscriptions as a reminder to us. Where there's hope, there's always light. It was his way of keeping us connected, no matter where life took us. Tears filled my eyes as I looked at the ring on my finger. It's incredible that they brought us together after all this time. It truly is, Amir agreed. It's almost as if he knew we'd need them someday. We fell into a comfortable silence, sipping our coffee and reflecting on the twists of fate that had led us to this moment. The days following my emotional reunion with Uncle Amur were a whirlwind of new experiences and overwhelming emotions. Adjusting to the newfound reality of having family members I never knew existed was both thrilling and daunting. I spent my days immersed in my new job, learning the ropes at Davidson Construction, and my evenings with Amir, slowly unraveling the tapestry of our family history. One evening, after a particularly grueling day at work, I found myself at Amir's home. His house was warm and inviting, a stark contrast to the sterile apartment I had been living in since my mother's passing. Amir's wife, Sara, was in the kitchen, preparing dinner, and the smell of home-cooked food filled the air, evoking memories of simpler times. Come in, Aisha, Sarah called out with a welcoming smile. Make yourself at home. Thank you, Sarah, I replied, feeling a pang of longing for the sense of belonging that had been missing from my life. It smells wonderful. Chicken pot pie, Amir's favorite, she said with a wink. I hope you like it. I'm sure I will, I said, settling onto a bar stool at the kitchen island. Can I help with anything? No need. Everything's just about ready, Sarah said, setting down a steaming dish on the table. Dinner will be ready in a few minutes. Amir should be back from his office soon. As if on cue, the front door opened, and Amir walked in, his face lighting up when he saw me. Aisha, how was your day? It was good, I said, genuinely meaning it. Challenging, but I'm learning a lot. Your team has been very supportive. Glad to hear it, he said, joining us at the kitchen island. They're a good group, and they've been looking forward to having you on board. Dinner was a relaxed, informal affair. Amir and Sarah's sons, Jake and Ethan, were both away at college, but their presence was felt through the family photos adorning the walls and the stories Amir shared over the meal. So Aisha, Sarah said as we settled into our seats, Amor tells me you're quite the quick learner. He's been very impressed with your progress. I blushed at the compliment. I'm just trying to keep up. There's so much to learn. You're doing great, Amor said, his tone reassuring. And I wanted to talk to you about something. How would you feel about coming with me to one of our project sites tomorrow? It's a bit different from the office work you've been doing. I'd love that, I said, excitement bubbling up. It would be great to see the work in action. Excellent, Amor said, raising his glass to new beginnings. To new beginnings, I echoed, clinking my glass against his. The next morning, I met Amir at the construction site bright and early. The sun was just starting to rise, casting a golden hue over the skeletal framework of the building. Workers moved about with practiced efficiency, the sounds of hammers and saws creating a rhythmic backdrop. Morning Aisha, Amir greeted me, handing me a hard hat and a pair of safety glasses. Ready for a tour? Absolutely, I said, slipping on the gear. As we walked through the site, Amar explained the various stages of construction, from laying the foundation to framing and beyond. His passion for his work was evident in every word, and I found myself captivated by his enthusiasm. Over here, we're working on the main support beams, he said, leading me to a section where workers were carefully positioning massive steel beams. It's critical work, and it requires precision and teamwork. I watched in awe as the team maneuvered the beams into place, their movements synchronized and efficient. It's incredible to see how everything comes together, I said. There's so much coordination involved. It is, Amir agreed. And it's the same with family. We need to work together, support each other, and build something strong and lasting. His words resonated deeply with me. I'm grateful for this opportunity, Amir both the job and the chance to reconnect with family.
He smiled warmly. I'm glad you're here, Aisha. We're building something special, both at work and at home. As the day progressed, I gained a newfound appreciation for the complexities of construction. Almar introduced me to several team members, each of whom shared their own experiences and expertise. It was clear that Amer had built not just a company, but a community. Later that afternoon, as we were wrapping up the tour, Amar pulled me aside. There's something I want to show you, he said, a hint of excitement in his voice. We walked over to a trailer that served as the site office. Inside, Almar rummaged through a drawer and pulled out a worn, leather-bound book. This was our father's journal, he said, handing it to me. It's filled with his thoughts, his dreams, and his hopes for the future. I think it's time you had it. I took the journal, my fingers tracing the faded cover. Thank you, Amar. This means a lot. Read it when you're ready, he said. I think you'll find it enlightening. That evening back in my apartment, I curled up on the couch and opened the journal. The pages were yellowed with age, and the handwriting was neat and precise. As I began to read, I felt a connection to a man I had never met, but whose legacy was now a part of my life. The entry spoke of love and loss, of dreams and determination. One passage in particular stood out to me. Where there's hope, there's always light. These words are a reminder that no matter how dark the times may seem, there is always a glimmer of hope guiding us forward. To my children, Amir and Layla, may these words guide you through life's challenges and lead you to a future filled with light. Tears filled my eyes as I read the words. The ring on my finger felt heavier, its significance deeper. I knew that despite the pain and struggles, I was part of something bigger, an unbreakable bond of family and hope. The next few weeks were a period of growth and adaptation. I threw myself into my work, eager to prove myself and learn everything I could. Amer was a patient mentor, guiding me through the intricacies of the business and sharing his knowledge. One evening after a long day at the office, Amer invited me over for another family dinner. This time, his sons, Jake and Ethan, were home from college. I was nervous about meeting them, but Amir assured me they were excited to meet their cousin. When I arrived at the house, I was greeted by the sounds of laughter and lively conversation. Jake and Ethan were both in their early twenties, with the same piercing blue eyes as Amir. Hey, you must be Aisha, Jake said, extending his hand. I'm Jake, and this is Ethan. It's great to meet you both, I said, shaking their hands. We've heard a lot about you, Ethan said with a grin. Dad's been talking non-stop about his amazing niece. I blushed at the compliment, I'm just trying to keep up. As we sat down to dinner, I felt a sense of warmth and belonging. Jake and Ethan shared stories of their college adventures, and I found myself laughing along with them. For the first time in a long while, I felt like I was part of something bigger. A family that welcomed me with open arms. After dinner, we gathered in the living room, and Amur brought out a box of old family photos. I thought you might like to see these, he said, handing me a photo of my mother as a young girl. Tears filled my eyes as I looked at the picture. She was beautiful, I said softly. She was, Amir agreed. And strong, just like you. As the evening wore on, we shared more stories and memories. The gap that had once separated us was slowly being bridged, and I felt a sense of peace and fulfillment. Later that night, as I lay in bed, I reflected on the journey that had brought me here. From the loss of my mother to the discovery of my family, it had been a tumultuous ride. But through it all, the ring on my finger had been a constant reminder of hope and light. I knew there were still challenges ahead, but with my newfound family by my side, I felt ready to face them. Together, we would honor the past, embrace the present, and build a future filled with love and light. As I drifted off to sleep, I felt a deep sense of gratitude for the connections I had found and the bonds that were being forged. Where there's hope, there's always light. And in the darkness, I had found my guiding star. The morning sun streamed through the window of my apartment, casting a warm glow across the room. I stretched and yawned, feeling a sense of anticipation for the day ahead. Today, I was going to spend the entire day with Amir and his family, my newfound family. It was still surreal to think about how much my life had changed in such a short span of time. The once solitary existence I had led was now filled with the promise of family bonds and shared memories. I arrived at Amir's house just as Sarah was finishing up breakfast preparations. 
The aroma of freshly brewed coffee and pancakes filled the air, instantly making me feel at home. Good morning, Aisha. Sarah greeted me with a warm hug. Come on in. Breakfast is almost ready. Morning, Sarah. It smells amazing in here. I replied, feeling a wave of gratitude for her kindness. As I settled into a chair at the kitchen table, Amar walked in, followed closely by Jake and Ethan, who were joking and playfully shoving each other. Morning everyone, Amar said, taking his seat. Aisha, I hope you're ready for a busy day. We've got a lot planned. I'm looking forward to it, I said, smiling at the easy camaraderie among the family. Over breakfast, we discussed the day's itinerary. Amer and Sarah had planned a family outing to a nearby park, followed by a visit to a local museum that featured a new exhibit on architecture and construction, a perfect blend of family bonding and professional interest. As we packed up the car, Jake and Ethan peppered me with questions about my life and interests. Despite the years that had separated us, there was a natural ease in our conversations. So Aisha, Jake began, Dad mentioned you're a pretty quick learner at the construction site. What's been the most interesting part for you so far? Honestly, it's hard to pick just one thing, I replied. I think the most fascinating part is seeing how all the different elements come together to create something tangible and lasting. It's like seeing a vision come to life. That's a good way to put it, Ethan said, nodding in agreement. There's something really satisfying about building something from the ground up. As we arrived at the park, I felt a sense of excitement. It was a beautiful day with the sun shining brightly and a gentle breeze rustling the leaves. We found a shaded spot under a large oak tree and spread out a blanket. Sarah had packed a picnic basket filled with delicious snacks, and we spent the next couple of hours talking, laughing, and enjoying each other's company. It was during these moments that I truly began to appreciate the depth of the connections we were forming. After the picnic, we made our way to the museum. The exhibit on architecture and construction was both educational and inspiring. Amer, with his vast knowledge and passion for the field, served as our impromptu tour guide, explaining the intricacies of various architectural styles and construction techniques. This section here, Amer said, pointing to a detailed model of a skyscraper, shows the innovative use of steel framing to support the building's immense height and weight. It's fascinating how advancements in materials and engineering have revolutionized the way we build. As we moved through the exhibit, I found myself drawn to a display featuring sustainable building practices. The information about using eco-friendly materials and energy-efficient designs resonated with me, and I made a mental note to explore these concepts further in my work at Davidson Construction. By the time we left the museum, the sun was beginning to set, casting a golden glow over the city. We decided to grab dinner at a nearby restaurant, continuing our conversations and deepening our bond. Over dinner, Jake and Ethan shared stories from their college experiences, and I found myself laughing more than I had in a long time. It felt good to be part of this lively, loving family. You know Aisha, Jake said, leaning back in his chair. It feels like you've always been a part of our family. I'm really glad we found each other. Me too, I said, my heart swelling with gratitude. I never imagined I'd have something like this. It's been a dream come true. As we finished dinner and headed back to Amir's house, I felt a profound sense of belonging. The evening continued with more stories and shared memories. Amar brought out more family photos, and we poured over them, filling in the gaps of our family history. Here's one of Layla and me when we were kids, Amar said, handing me a photo. This was taken just before we were separated. She always had that determined look on her face like she knew exactly what she wanted. I studied the photo, feeling a connection to the young girl who would grow up to be my mother. She was amazing, I said softly. And now I understand where my strength comes from. Finally, Umar spoke again. Aisha, there's one more thing I'd like to show you. It's a bit of a drive, but I think you'll find it meaningful. Of course, I said, intrigued. I'd love to see whatever it is. We left the cafe and drove out of the city, the landscape gradually shifting from urban sprawl to rolling hills and open fields. After about an hour, Amar turned onto a narrow, winding road that led to a small, well-kept cemetery. He parked the car and led me to a modest gravestone near the edge of the property. The inscription read, Layla Davidson, Beloved sister, mother, and friend, Where there's hope, there's always light. I felt a surge of emotion as I knelt beside the grave. 
She's here, I whispered my voice breaking. Yes. Amr said softly. I had this stone placed here when I discovered her passing. I wanted her to have a proper resting place, a place where we could come and remember her. Tears streamed down my face as I traced the inscription with my fingers. Thank you, Uncle Amr. This means so much to me. He knelt beside me, placing a comforting hand on my shoulder. We're in this together now Aisha, we'll keep her memory alive and build a future that honors her legacy. As we stood there the late afternoon sun casting long shadows over the cemetery, I felt a profound sense of peace and connection. I knew that despite the pain and loss, I had found something beautiful, a family, a history and a future filled with hope and light. The night ended with hugs and promises to spend more time together. As I drove home, I reflected on the day's events. The connections I had made, the stories I had heard, and the love I had felt were all parts of a new chapter in my life. A chapter filled with hope, family, and a sense of belonging I had longed for. When I got home, I pulled out my mother's journal and added a new entry. Today, I spent the day with my newfound family. We laughed, we learned, and we bonded in ways I never thought possible. I feel closer to mom than ever, knowing that her spirit lives on in the love and strength of our family. Where there's hope, there's always light. And I have found both in abundance. I closed the journal, feeling a sense of peace. The days began to blur together as I settled into a routine that felt both new and comfortably familiar. My mornings were filled with the buzz of activity at Davidson Construction, my afternoons with the challenge of learning new skills and tackling projects, and my evenings with the warmth of family. The sense of belonging that had been absent for so long was now a comforting constant in my life. One particularly brisk morning, as I made my way to the office, I found Amir already there, poring over blueprints with a concentrated frown. The sight of him engrossed in his work was a reminder of the dedication that had built this company. Good morning, Amir. I greeted him, setting my bag down. Morning, Aisha, he replied, looking up with a smile. I've got something special for you today. Curiosity peaked and moved closer to his desk. What is it? We've got a new project starting and I want you to be a part of it from the ground up, he said, pushing the blueprints towards me. It's a sustainable housing development, something that aligns with those eco-friendly practices you seemed interested in at the museum. My eyes widened with excitement as I scanned the blueprints. This is incredible. I'd love to be involved. Great, Amr said, clapping me on the shoulder. You'll be working closely with our project manager, Nina. She's one of the best and I think you'll learn a lot from her. Thank you, Amir. I won't let you down, I said, determination bubbling up within me. Later that morning, I met Nina, a sharp and dynamic woman with a no-nonsense attitude. She walked me through the details of the project, explaining the innovative techniques and materials we'd be using. Our goal is to create affordable, energy-efficient homes that have a minimal environmental impact, Nana explained. It's a challenging project, but one that can make a real difference. I'm all in, I said, feeling a sense of purpose. Where do we start? Over the next few weeks, I immersed myself in the project, learning everything I could about sustainable construction practices. Nina was a demanding mentor, but her high standards pushed me to excel. One afternoon, as we were reviewing plans for a rainwater harvesting system, Nina looked at me thoughtfully. You know, Aisha, you've got a natural talent for this. Have you ever considered furthering your education in sustainable architecture? The question caught me off guard. I've thought about it, but with everything that's happened, I wasn't sure if it was the right time. There's no time like the present, Nina said with a smile. You've got potential, and I think you could really make an impact in this field. The idea took root in my mind, and that evening I discussed it with Amir and Sarah over dinner. I think it's a fantastic idea, Amir said, his eyes lighting up. You've got the passion and the drive. We'd support you every step of the way. Absolutely, Sarah agreed. It's an opportunity to honor your mother's legacy and forge your own path. Encouraged by their support, I began researching programs and found one that seemed perfect. A master's degree in sustainable architecture at a nearby university. With Amir and Sarah's encouragement, I applied, feeling a mix of excitement and nervousness. As I waited for a response, I continued to work on the housing development project, each day learning something new and becoming more confident in my abilities. The project itself was progressing well. 
and the first model home was starting to take shape. One afternoon, as I was inspecting the site, Amir approached me with a grin. About a minute, Aisha. Of course, I said, setting down my notes. He handed me a thick envelope, the university's logo emblazoned on the front. This came for you today. My heart pounded as I tore open the envelope and read the letter inside. I got in, I said, my voice shaking with disbelief. I've been accepted into the program. Amar pulled me into a hug. Congratulations, Aisha. I knew you could do it. Thank you, Amir. For everything I said, feeling a rush of gratitude. The following weeks were a whirlwind of preparations. Balancing my current responsibilities with the impending start of my studies was challenging, but the support from my family made it manageable. Jake and Ethan, whom had returned home for the summer, helped me prepare for my new academic journey. You're going to do great, Aisha. Jake said one evening as we packed up supplies for the project site. And we'll be here cheering you on. Yeah, you've got this, Ethan added. You're practically a genius when it comes to this stuff. Their confidence in me bolstered my own. And as the start date of my program approached, I felt ready to take on the challenge. The night before my first day at the university, Amir called for a family meeting. We gathered in a living room, the atmosphere filled with anticipation. I just want to say how proud we all are of you, Aisha. Amir began, his voice filled with emotion. You faced so much, and yet you've continued to move forward with strength and determination. Your mother would be incredibly proud of you. Tears filled my eyes as I looked around at my family. I couldn't have done it without all of you. Your support means everything to me. We'll always be here for you, Sarah said, hugging me tightly, no matter what. The next morning, I walked onto the university campus with a mix of nerves and excitement. The bustling energy of the students, the historic buildings and the promise of new knowledge filled me with anticipation. I knew that this was the beginning of a new chapter, one that would shape my future in ways I couldn't yet imagine. As I sat in my first lecture, taking in the professor's words about sustainable design and innovative building practices, I felt a profound sense of purpose. This was where I was meant to be, and I was ready to embrace the journey ahead. Balancing my studies with my responsibilities at Davidson Construction was challenging but fulfilling. I found that the more I learned, the more passionate I became about sustainable architecture and its potential to change lives. One evening, after a particularly intense day of classes and project work, I returned to a Murr's house for dinner. The warmth of the home, the laughter and the shared stories were a reminder of the support system I had. How was your day, Aisha? Amir asked as we sat down to eat. Busy, but I'm learning so much, I replied. I'm really excited about what we're doing with the sustainable housing project. We're excited too, Amir said. Your ideas have already made a huge impact. As we continued to discuss the project and my studies, I realized just how far I had come. The first rays of dawn filtered through the blinds, casting a soft glow across my desk. I sat there staring at the plans for the sustainable housing project feeling a sense of awe at how far we had come. The semester had flown by, and my understanding of sustainable architecture had deepened with each passing week. Balancing my studies and work at Davidson Construction had been challenging, but the satisfaction of seeing our project take shape was worth every late night and early morning. One crisp autumn day, I arrived at the construction site to find Amir and Nina in deep conversation. As I approached, they both looked up, Smiles spreading across their faces. Aisha, just the person we wanted to see. Amr said, waving me over. We've got some exciting news. What is it? I asked, my curiosity piqued. The city council has approved our plans for the sustainable housing development. Nina said, beaming. We can start construction on the first set of homes next month. That's fantastic. I exclaimed, feeling a rush of exhilaration. This is such a huge step forward. It is, Amir agreed, and it's thanks to your hard work and dedication. You've been instrumental in getting us to this point. The following weeks were a blur of activity as we prepared for the groundbreaking ceremony. The entire team at Davidson Construction was abuzz with excitement, and the sense of camaraderie was palpable. We were about to embark on a project that would not only showcase our skills, but also make a meaningful impact on the community. On the day of the ceremony, the site was transformed into a bustling hub of activity. Local officials, community members, and the media gathered to witness the launch of our sustainable housing development. 
As I looked around at the smiling faces, I felt a profound sense of pride. Amar stepped up to the podium, his voice strong and confident as he addressed the crowd. Today marks the beginning of a new chapter for Davidson Construction and our community. This project is more than just a set of buildings, it's a promise of hope for a better, more sustainable future. After the ceremony we gathered for a small celebration at Amir's house. The atmosphere was filled with joy and laughter, a testament to the strong bonds we had formed. Aisha, I want to toast to you, Amir said, raising his glass. Your passion and dedication have been a driving force behind this project. We're all so proud of you. Thank you, Amir, I said, feeling a lump in my throat. I couldn't have done it without the support of everyone here. This is just the beginning, and I'm excited for what's to come. As the evening wore on, I found myself sitting on the porch with Jake and Ethan, the cool night air filled with the sounds of crickets and distant laughter. You know Aisha, Jake said, taking a sip of his drink. Watching you grow and succeed has been really inspiring. You've shown us all what it means to persevere. Yeah. Ethan added nodding. You've become an integral part of our family, and we're so glad to have you with us. I'm glad too, I said smiling. Finding all of you has been the greatest gift. I feel like I've finally found where I belong. In the months that followed, the sustainable housing project progressed steadily. Each day brought new challenges and opportunities for growth. I continued to balance my studies and work, driven by the vision of a brighter future. One afternoon, as I was reviewing blueprints in my office, Nina walked in with a thoughtful expression. Aisha, I've been meaning to talk to you about something. What's on your mind? I asked, looking up from my desk. I've been so impressed with your work and dedication, Nina said. Have you ever considered taking on a leadership role in the company? I think you'd be a fantastic project manager. The suggestion took me by surprise. I've thought about it, but I'm not sure if I'm ready. You are. Nina said firmly, you have the skills, the passion, and the vision. We need leaders like you to drive our projects forward. Her words stayed with me, and that evening, I discussed the possibility with Amir and Sarah over dinner. Nina thinks I should consider a leadership role, I said, feeling a mix of excitement and apprehension. Do you think I'm ready for that? Absolutely, Amir said without hesitation. You've proven yourself time and time again. We believe in you, Aisha. I agree, Sarah added. You have a natural ability to lead and inspire others. This could be a wonderful opportunity for you. Buoyed by their confidence, I decided to take the leap. Over the next few weeks, I transitioned into my new role as project manager, overseeing the completion of the sustainable housing development. The responsibility was daunting, but the support from my family and colleagues made it manageable. One crisp morning, as I stood on the construction site watching the first completed homes take shape, Amr joined me. It's amazing to see it all come together, I said, my voice filled with awe. It is, Amir agreed. And it's just the beginning. We're going to change lives with this project, Aisha. As the final touches were added to the homes, we prepared for the ribbon-cutting ceremony. The day was filled with anticipation and excitement, a culmination of months of hard work and dedication. Standing at the podium, I addressed the crowd, my heart pounding with pride. This project is a testament to what we can achieve when we work together towards a common goal. It's a promise of hope for a better future, and I'm honored to have been a part of it. As I cut the ribbon, the crowd erupted in applause. It was a moment of triumph, not just for me, but for everyone who had been a part of this journey. Later that evening, as I walked through the newly completed homes, I felt a sense of fulfillment. The journey had been challenging, but it had also been incredibly rewarding. I knew that my mother's spirit had guided me every step of the way, and I felt her presence in the joy and hope that filled these homes. Back at Amir's house we gathered for a final celebration, the atmosphere was filled with warmth and love, a reminder of the strong bonds that had been forged. To family, Amir said, raising his glass, and to the promise of hope. To hope, we all echoed, clinking our glasses together. I knew that there would be more challenges ahead, but I also knew that with my family by my side, I could face anything. Where there's hope, there's always light, and with the promise of hope guiding us, the future was bright and full of possibilities.